What it do, what it do, it's your boy Mo Hustle, and we are now tuned in to the hot seat, and today we have a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself one time. Okay, uh, Gary Reese, a.k.a. G. Smooth slash The Birdman. The Birdman. All right. Birdman? Yes, sir. I was the Birdman of uh, Texas Department of Correction. No oh, shit. Right. They so gave me the name The Birdman. I did 33 years oh, in prison, shit. sadly to say. But it took 33 years for me to realize that uh, if I didn't listen, I wasn't going to learn. Why? So I learned the hard way. Mm. Okay, so I learned that if you put in 100%, you get out what you put in, period. Right. Okay. That's I'm what's glad up, man. to be here, sir. The OG, the OG, basically. Right. 33 years in prison, that's a long time. Long time, and I had plenty of time to think and uh, get yeah. my head together. Might have took a few times to get it together, but then I was on one side of the fence trying to do uh, Satan's work. Yeah. And at the same time, I was trying to let the Lord spare me, save me, so I was doing two at one time and realized that it wasn't going to work. It took a while to get it through to me, you know. Mm-hmm. But other than that, uh, a lesson well learned. I say it like that. That's what's up, man. So that's a long time. Around what age did you did did you go in? I went to prison when I was uh, eighteen years old. Eighteen. Right. Shit. Barely turned eighteen. Right. Straight in. I got the case. I got the case when I was seventeen. I turned eighteen in uh, jail the next month. No oh, shit. Okay. Um, and. And when you went in at 18, you had came out of Fifth Ward? Yes, I was. I was a football player at Phyllis Wheatley High School. And uh, at that time, uh, I had it going on, as they say. I was a football player at Phyllis Wheatley. And I had a desire to be a standout. I wanted to be a football player. I wanted to be a dancer. I wanted to be a James Brown. Yeah. I wanted to be Michael Jackson. Mm. I wanted to be Malcolm X. Mm. My mama said, you need to make your mind up who you're going to be. Right. But that's where I got twisted because I was trying to be too many things. Okay, right. And I started listening to the echoes from the teachers telling me one thing and the crowd that I was following. Okay? Mm-hmm. And when I realized that I was pleasing the crowd that was taking me in the wrong direction, my mama kept mm-hmm. saying, son, you're following the wrong crowd. Yeah. I'm coming in late, I'm going to start drinking, and I get up to go to school, and now the teacher's telling me the same thing that my mama telling me. Gary, you're following the wrong crowd. Mm. You got too much talent to be doing what you're doing and following the wrong crowd. And my very words was the last time I seen Mr. Piper, vice principal, God bless his soul. He pulled on the cone and everybody was running, running. The pipe is coming, the pipe is coming. He was (laughs) picking everybody up on the corner that was walking Mm. that didn't have a pass to be off campus. Yeah. So there I was, standing on the corner with the fella, and I ain't finna run today. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to smoke cigarettes, and we drank in the wine bottle. And he said, Gary, you better come on to school. You were following the wrong crowd. I said, man, I'm grown. Yeah. I'm grown, okay? I ain't coming to school today. Mm. I okay. thought I was being smart. I know a lot of people from Fifth Ward, man, um, I, I never really like experienced like living there. I passed through it a few times to go see some stuff. I shot some music videos out there, but you know, tell everybody that's not from Houston or Fifth Ward what it's like in that neighborhood. Well, uh, it don't make no difference what ward you from or right, right. what city you from. It's the choices that you make. Yeah. You know, we all have a choice. But I know it, the neighborhood's pretty tough. And right? it, it was a hard neighborhood, and I was trying to be like my big brother. My big brother had a reputation for being a tough guy, bad guy with his fists, you know, so I wanted to be like him. Yeah. And then I started realizing that he was trying to be like 
our father, he was older than I. So therefore, I was trying to be like my big brother. Mm. But my big brother was trying to be like my father. Right. And my father was a standout football player. And I used to lay up in my bed at night and read them articles about my daddy, Fred Reese. And I used to wonder, wow, would I ever be this here tough? But at the same time, my brother was a few years older than me, and he was guiding me to be tough. Yeah, he so, made it a fight. So, so your father was a boxer? No, my father was a standout football player. They football won, player. Okay. yes, uh, 1934, 5, 6, and 7. They won the state champion at Phyllis Wheatley High School. Mm. All four seasons, basketball, football, baseball, and track. My father was to stand out on all four championship teams. So. Look at the record. It's in the library. I did go get the copies. I'm going to go back and get some fresh copies. Mm -hmm. And my father is all over that power times in the 1930s, you know? It's the real Bo Jackson, huh? Right. He was, he was, he was the deal. But he got twisted up. Oh, okay. He got twisted up in the mix. I'm gonna call it yeah. caught up in the sauce. My father got caught up in the sauce, and it dripped all the way down to me. And that's another part of my story I tell later on. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, man. I I know that the streets of Fifth Ward are pretty tough. You know, uh, a, a lot of guys I know they get into boxing. They all want to box. Okay. It's a boxing thing out there. Okay. I have something I have to tell on that story. Yeah. Boxing. Mm -hmm. I have a picture here, and I, I got to share it with you since we talk about boxing because I know that you know George Foreman. Right, George Foreman, okay. Okay, so since we're going to talk about boxing, yeah, I want you to know that I went to school with George. Oh, yeah? The heavyweight champ. And I'm saying, can I find his photo here since you brought it up because uh, at the time that I was being the clown, in town, the biggest clown in town. Yeah. Joy Foreman was trying to get with my group. Yeah. I'm going to say it again, George. I went to see him a few uh, years ago and let him know that I was out of prison because mm -hmm. George had a reason to tell his story about how he and I met, okay? Oh, yeah, no. So here's the picture right here. I don't know how we can show it on that's dope, man. What we're going to do later on, okay. we'll, we'll post it on the video so everybody can see, okay? Bam. Thank I you, sir. You. Okay. I got you. So uh, during, yours, during that time now, uh, I was trying to find my direction, and uh, I done started indulging in drugs and smoking marijuana, if you want to call it that. That's yep. what I was doing, marijuana, yep. drinking wine, you know, how that Thunderbird back in the day. Oh, okay, my, 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 my dad loved that Thunderbird, that too. Thunder man. chicken, that Thunder chicken. <laughs> so uh, I had them got in the wrong crowd for one reason. One reason was that my mother was a counselor at E.O. Smith. Yeah. And she had taught people like Mickey Leland and Barbara Jordan. And my mother was well loved and respected by all. And she was the student's favorite, my mother. But at the same time, I was under her coat at the time because I was at school until I got out of the ninth grade. Oh, so you had to go I to school while nerd. your mom worked there? So your mom right, worked there too? Right. Ooh, that was right harder. There. So I was a nerd, okay? Yeah. I was under her arm, under her wing all the time. Mm. I would cut up in my classes, and they would go and get my mother all the time. I'm always looking up, and my mom was passing by, checking to see what I'm doing today, mm. if I'm finna act up. But I, they had me under control them three years. From the seventh, I was a little bad boy. I always had to sit up by the teacher, because I was always cutting it up. So finally, I got from under her wing, and when I went to Jack Yates and got the meeting, thugs, mm -hmm. that was my cup of tea. I want to be a thug. Yeah, he was like, man, I want to be like that. Right. I want to shoot hooky, 
pull trains on girl. Yeah. Go to school and go to sleep in the classroom. <laughs> yeah. What what, oh. what what kind of music was on the radio at that time? At that time, it was rock. Archie Bell and the Drills. Archie Bell and the Drills. Archie Bell and the Drills. He was in my class. They had a group. They still exist. They got they sold many many records. Archie oh. Bell and the Drills. They went to Phyllis Wheeler High School. Oh. And he and I was in competition because I wanted <clears> to be. I got some pictures of Archie Bell also. I went to his gathering a couple of years ago. They had a fundraiser for him. Mm -hmm. But I went to see him. And I'm going to shout out to you, Archie. Here I am. I'm coming. I'm still trying to come back, okay? But uh, I was off into that music thing. In fact, they had a Skipper Lee Frazier right here on Alameda. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear Skipper Lee Frazier? Mm, no. Nah. KCOH Radio. And he was the biggest disc jockey in Houston. At that time, that's dope. Right. And he used to cater behind me, and I used to be thrilled behind that because every time he come to Wheatley for a, a, a get-together, you know, had to, how they had them sock hops back in the day, he would always holler, Gary Reese, y'all better watch that Gary Reese. That He was fueling me mm -hmm. like a bigger clown than I was, okay? Yeah. So I got I start paying attention to two dudes I never forget, Larry Hoffman and Don Shepard. They was the best dressed at the high school. And they were sharp all the time. And they used to just mesmerize the girls. Yeah. And I used to watch this here. Yeah. And I'm wearing tennis all the time. Uh, <laughs> Chuck Taylor's. Mm -hmm. But I'm watching these dudes come to school every day, sharp. Yeah. So that summer I told my buddies, Langham, I said, you know what we ought to do? We ought to go back to school this year and see can we get with Larry and Shepard. Mm. All we got to do is get a job and work all summer. So we made that pack, me, Langham, and KC. God bless both of y'all. And we made that pack that we was going to work all summer and get clothes and go to school and bust it at bust down. Yeah. And I be doggone, I worked all summer. Mm. And I saved my little money up, and I went to get ready to go shopping the week of school opening. And I called my mother. I said, Mother dear, I said, I got $500 here. $500 then will get you a lot of clothes, okay? Mm. I said, I got $500, but I still need $150, mother, please. I'll give it back to you, I promise. Hmm. I said, but mother, I need it because this year I'm going to win the most popular and the best dress. Please, please. She said, come on here, son. And I asked my mother to write me a check, and she said, okay. And I jumped off the bus. And went to my mama's house. Yeah. I was staying with my grandfather at the time. And the door was open. I went in. My brother was in the back playing. I said, Mother, I'm here. She said, look in my purse, son. It's sticking out. I said, okay. She was in the restroom. I said, okay, Mother, I see it. She said, get it and be careful now. I said, yes, ma'am, I love you. She said, I love you too. Did something I shouldn't have did. Well, I seen all four of her cars. Yeah. Neiman Marcus, Sackwitz, Ballastines, and Bolis. Hmm. You went wow. hard, huh? You, 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 you went pretty hard at that time? I said, wow. <laughs> I could go. Gary, you still there? I said, no, ma'am. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm, I was just trying to do something here, Mom. And I went on and got her car. I got on the bus, and I went to Sackwitz, Neiman Marcus, and I put $250 on each one of them. Damn. My mother wasn't making but $5,000 a year back then. Oh, shit. So you just ran it up. She was mad, huh? Very mad. I hurt my mother. I know I did. I asked her to forgive me this day. I say, Mother, what happened? 
when I when she finally found out, I never will forget. I come to school, come from school, and I got some girls walking me home. I got my high heels shoes on with the thick, like Rick James used to wear. Yeah, yeah. That shit they was wearing. Some pimp shit. Wearing that. <laughs> I was wearing it before Rick James was. I was. No oh, shit. Bam! Here I was, a clown. My grandfather, what's going on? You got all these girls coming knocking on you. Oh, the Fifth Ward I, Mac, I, I was going to say. Mac, man, I'm a, well, I, I was man. a clown. I was a clown. And he just shake his head. But this day here, I walked in the door. Two weeks after school, she done got her receipts from the uh, from the stores. Yeah. And I walk in, my grandfather said, here that bastard is walking in the door. Ooh. I knew what it was. What you talking about, Pops? He said, y'all done knock your damn brains out. He got his cane. I said, man, chill, what's going on? He said, get on this damn phone because your mother is on the phone. Mm. I said, chill, man, chill. Hello, mother, what's up? Son, why did you do that? <clears throat> yeah. I didn't have to ask what. I said, mother, I told you I'm going to pay you back. I promise you. To make some money, okay? Mm. Archie Bell and Drills. I'm right there with them, mama. Just give me a chance. Yeah. I'm finna get on stage and make money, I promise. She said, come on out here so I can talk to you. Mm -mm. I said, mama, I'm not coming out there. <laughs> well, you already knew it was coming. I'm not coming out there and get no whooping, mama. She said, come on out here. And my grandfather said, you bastard, you. And he throw the cane back, and I run out the house. Mm. I had to sleep in the backyard that night. Yeah. Slept well, slept in his old car, but he was an old man at the time, and mm -hmm. he wasn't driving no more. So I slept in the garage, and I come back and knock on the door that morning, asked him could I get ready for school. And he said, yeah, come on, your mama going to talk to you later. So I asked her to forgive me for that. And uh, let's take a break right now. 